Hebrews chapter 11, as we cruise right along through this, this chapter, this book, um, <laughs> Hebrews chapter 11, we're going to go to verse 7, we can, uh, if you're able to, stand up for the reading of the word. <clears throat> By faith. Noah being warned concerning events as yet unseen, in reverent fear, constructed an ark for the saving of his household. By this he condemned the world and became an heir of the righteousness that comes by faith. Let's pray. Father God, Lord, we thank you for your holy word, Lord, your word that guides us, that leads us, Lord, that we can stand on, that we can hold on to, Lord. Pray as we uh, dive into this, Lord, that you... Bless our time, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. Most everybody knows the story of Noah and the Ark, right? Noah's Ark. Um, in general, um, even even before Christ, a lot of us have a a a. Um, a picture of Noah's Ark. They, there's movies. There's all kinds of things going that go on, and and Noah's Ark is a big part of the Bible, and the flood and judgment and all this stuff going on is a huge part of the Bible in Christianity. But you know what? There's cultures all around the world that have an account of a great flood. There, there's some something like over 500 different accounts of a flood that covered the entire earth. So you go to, to each and every culture, well, I can't say everyone because there might be some that don't, but over 500 different cultures, over 500 different stories and accounts that say that there was a great flood and most of them attribute it to a divine source. Most of them think, believe that it, it is caused by something bigger than them. That there was a God in the heavens that um, judge the earth. And a lot of them have similar accounts. Um, they have, a lot of them have different names of, of the guy that, was, that built the boat. A lot of them have different uh, little nuances based upon this. But, I mean, we could all watch something. Um, I mean, I could look at all your guys' church notes tomorrow, and you guys will all have a different view of what happened today, what's going on today. Some of these cultures even talk about an attempt, many attempts to correct the corruption that was going on in the earth, which led to a flood. Many call this a judgment, call the, the, the flood a judgment that came from God, whoever they believe their God was. Most of them tend to point to one family that was saved. One family that, that God used to continue on creation. The account of Noah is huge in Christianity. The account of Noah is, is, is big in history. It's big in... Um, and walks, it's big because there's a whole lot of, of pictures that we can see here. You know, the flood is a picture of God's judgment. It, it, it's a picture of God wiping out and condemning the whole world in one act. <clears throat> the ark is a picture of the salvation that is freely given. That, 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 is, that is given. And then Noah is a picture of what it is to have God's favor. I mean, there's all this stuff that is happening that, that is a, a, a big picture 
So we're going to turn to Genesis chapter 6. Because Genesis chapter 6 is, is huge. We're going to skip over a lot of this. We're only going to hit a couple little spots. But turning to, to Genesis 6, I'm going to read verse 8 and verse 9. It says, but Noah found favor in the eyes of God, in the eyes of the Lord. These are the generations of Noah. Noah was a righteous man, blameless in his generation. Noah walked with God. It's a lot, of, a lot happening right there. It said that Noah found favor in the eyes of the Lord. Noah found favor in the eyes of the Lord. And, and, and you look at this right there. Noah found favor in the eyes of the Lord. But if you fast forward to, uh, I think it's either chapter 8 or chapter 9. And Noah planted a vineyard, made wine. And continued to sin. <laughs> we'll, we'll just leave it at that. It says that he found favor though. And, and knowing that God knows the beginning from the end. How did Noah find favor in the eyes of God? How did Noah, how was Noah credited as a righteous man? How was it that, that Noah walked with God? How was it that Noah, uh, out of all the people that are on this earth, that were on the earth at that time, that were about to be condemned, why Noah? Why Noah? Whenever I, I see stuff like this, I, I gotta ask, what was Noah doing that everybody else wasn't doing? What was Noah up to that gave him a righteousness, that gave him favor in the eyes of the Lord? Because when, when, when it comes down to it, I want that favor. I want the same favor that Noah has. As we're walking through Hebrews chapter 11, I mean, there's a lot going on. We talked about this paragraph last week that Abel was a picture of faith and worship. Enoch is a picture of faith and life, the walk with God. Noah is a picture of faith at work. You know, we look and we, we, we say, why did Noah find favor with God? Why did Noah, why was Noah right in the sight of God? Some of them would say that he built an ark and he did, did all these things in the name of God. And, and so God found, he found favor in God's eyes. But Hebrews eleven seven is different. It doesn't say that it was by his works that he found favor with God. The beginning, it says, by faith. Noah, being warned by God concerning events as yet unseen in reverent fear, constructed an ark for the saving of his household. By this he condemned the world and became the heir of the righteousness that comes by faith. By the time we get through Hebrews 11, you guys are going to be tired of hearing about faith. It's like uh, types and shadows and, and like all this stuff that we were talking about before. Hebrews has little Subjects as, as it goes through and it hammers it and hammers it and hammers it. But I think it's because we need to really listen to what it is. God is, it, it was written by, by someone. We don't know who it was, but you, you dive into it and the Holy Spirit was involved in the whole thing. It, it, it's the Word of God. It's the written Word of God. It's God laying this out. And so if God is, is wanting us to know about faith and how this guy was righteous, how Abel was righteous, how how Enoch was righteous, how Noah was righteous. We're going to get on to Abraham and we're going to get on to Rahab and all these different characters in the Bible that talks about their righteousness and them finding favor in the sight of God. And there's one thing that links them. By faith. They believed God. I mean, you go through all of their... Their, their accounts, I mean, you continue on to Noah and Abraham, man, those guys were hot messes. They did some stupid things. 
Noah planted a vineyard, got drunk, and other stuff happened. There's a lot of speculation. I'm just going to leave that alone. Abraham told, told two different people, not just once, two different people that his wife was his sister so that they wouldn't kill him. Two different people. But it wasn't a full lie because she's technically his half-sister, so, I mean... <laughs> You might be get, getting tired of this, and you might get tired of this over the next couple months. But the most important thing for you to know is that we are justified by faith alone in Jesus Christ. We are declared righteous in the sight of God by faith in Jesus Christ. If you get nothing out of this program, if you get nothing out of this church service, I want you to walk away knowing that you are justified by faith alone in Jesus Christ. Amen. There's nothing that you do to add to this. There's nothing that you can do to, to earn more favor with God. It's by faith and faith alone. Sola fide is the, the foundational truth of this walk with Christ. Amen. We walk by faith and not by sight. The life we live now, we live by faith in the Son of God. We talked about faith in life last week with Enoch walking with God and then God didn't even make him die. That, 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 you know, he, he just took him home. He transferred him. He, you know, he got sent from, from prison to, uh, he got released. Hebrews 11.1 1 says that faith is the conviction of things not seen. As this unfolds in Noah, verse 3 says, The Lord said, My spirit shall not abide in man forever, for he is flesh. His day shall be 120 years. Skipping over to verse 5, it says, The Lord saw that the wickedness of man was great in the earth, and that every intention of the thoughts of his heart was only evil continually. Twenty years before the flood the Lord told Noah he's not gonna he's not gonna deal with this forever man is evil man is wicked he's not gonna do it again he's, he, he, he's done he's done the corruption I, I can only imagine where they were I look at the world that we're in right now and I go how could this be any better than what was going on back then I don't know Genesis, let's skip over to verse 13. It said, God said to Noah, I have determined to make an end to all flesh. I have determined to make an end to all flesh. For the earth is filled with violence through them. Behold, I will destroy them with the earth. Behold, I will destroy them with the earth. So he said, make yourself an ark of gopher wood. Make rooms in the ark and cover it inside and out with pitch. This is how you are to make it. The length of the ark, 300 cubits. Its breadth, 50 cubits. And its height, 30 cubits. Make a roof for the ark and finish it to a cubit above and set the door of the ark in its side. Make it with lower, second, and third decks. And behold, I will bring a flood of waters upon the earth to destroy all flesh, in which is the breath of life under heaven. Everything that is on the earth shall die but I will establish my covenant with you and you shall come into the ark you and your sons, your wife and your sons' wives with you. Kind of harsh, huh? Everything on the earth will die. A hundred and twenty years before the event God told Noah I'm going to destroy everything. I'm going to destroy it. But, but he, you basically... You would find favor in my eyes. You believe me, so so build a boat. Make it out of gopher wood, whatever the heck that is. Put pitch on it, build it up. He told him specifically how to make this thing. He said, I'm going to establish my covenant with you. Think about this, though. Most commentators, and every, as, as I dove into this, would say that it had never rained before. 
You go back to Genesis 2 and it says there was a great mist that covered the earth. And that, that would water the crops and, 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 you know, basically was the water of life. Was, was how everything grew and how all that stuff. Most would say that it never rained. Put yourself in Noah's shoes for a second. Just, just, just think about this for a minute. It had never rained. And God was going to judge the entire world. He said, build a boat. We have trouble believing stuff that has happened before. We have trouble resting in Christ on stuff that has already been that has already happened. You know, we look back on the cross and we have trouble believing God for that. We have trouble believing God for, for that salvation. Imagine God coming and saying, hey, it's going to rain. But you're like, what the, what? What? What do you mean rain? What's, what's rain? Water's going to fall from the sky. Oh, dude, you're just, you're nuts. You're crazy. You're crazy. But God was starting over. Noah was becoming a new Adam. Because every, all, all people came from Adam, but you go through and he destroyed all people. So now every one of us in here are direct descendant from Noah. Everyone. God was starting over. He's the root of all of this. All he had to go off of was the word of God. All he had to go off of was God said that he's going to destroy the earth and he told me to build a boat. That's all he had to go off of. There was no evidence of rain. There had never been a judgment like this on the earth. This is completely new to him. Nothing made any... I put myself in that spot. I'm like, this doesn't make any sense at all. This, I mean, what are you talking about? Going to build a boat? And, and he's like 100 miles from any body of water and he starts building a boat out of gopher wood. There's no written word for him to go off of. There was no special any of this, no any of that. All he knew was that God told him to build a boat. That it was going to rain and he told him how to build it. You go on later in verse 22 and it says, Noah did this. He did all that God commanded him. He did this. Did all that God had commanded him. He simply believed the word. He believed the word that God spoke to him. He believed the word that he, he believed the whole thing of what God had given him at that time. See, we have we have the this luxury of, of hindsight. We can look back and see evidences of all this stuff. We can see how the flood affected the 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 geology, the stuff. <laughs> the earth and the way that, that things are formed and, and we can look back and we can see the salvation of the Lord we can look back and there's evidences of, of all this stuff going on he didn't have any of that all he knew was that the world around him was going to hell in a handbasket and that God was about to destroy him and he told him to build a boat so he took what he knew and he walked with it he took what God had revealed to him and walked with it all he had was a word we even go back and we have 66 books. We have thousands of verses to go off of. And we're like, well, we need more than that. There's got to be more. We, the word cannot be enough. I, I, I got to have this. I've got to have that. I, I, you know, are you sure? Is there confirmation over here? The word says it. And just like Noah had to take the word of God and walk with it, you have to take the word of God and walk with it. It's the same thing. Our revelation is just a little bit more complete than what Noah had. Noah had one thing. You know, it's going to rain. I'm going to flood the earth. I'm going to destroy the earth. Go build a boat. And this is how you do it. See, he didn't even leave anything up for debate. He said, just do it. Well, uh, how big should I make? No, no. Here, 300 cubits. By faith, Noah believed that God was going to destroy the earth. Why? Because he said so. Because God said he was going to destroy the earth and he just took him for his word. 
You know, some people think that that Noah was saved by his faith or by his works, by actually doing it. But that's not what it is. His faith was working. It was because of his faith that he did what he did. You'll get into some some circles in Christianity, and as you guys grow and you'll go to other churches and you'll do other things, there's a battle sometimes between faith and works. There's a battle that, that oh, we're saved by faith. Oh, but what about what you're doing? And we're saved, what about what you're doing? Da, 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 da. They pit the two against each other like, like this, this straw man argument, this, this thing that, that's apparent but it's not real. Hebrews 11, 7 is very clear. It was by faith Noah built the ark. Did Noah building the ark save him though? Was that how he was right with God? No. But because of his faith in God, he acted out in obedience to what God said. Some will pit Paul against James. In Romans 4, it, it says, Blessed is the one whom God counts righteous apart from works. Declared right apart from works. But then James chapter 2 says faith without works is dead. So it, it looks like there's this apparent contradiction that, that, that there's this thing that will like, well, so is it by works or is it by faith? It was so much that even Martin Luther, Martin Luther was like James is, this, this was his words, James is a straw man book. He couldn't even reconcile it. Faith and works. He had strugg struggles reconciling it because he was so sold on, God, on, on, on righteous by faith, which is the truth. He's like, well, this is what Paul says. And, and he was like, James shouldn't even be in the Bible. Shouldn't even be there. Because of an apparent contradiction. But when you look at what it says, he says, you say you have faith. I have works. I'll show you my faith by my works. Calvin summed it up the best. This is this is like the greatest quote I've been on this quote. This is like awesome. We are saved by faith alone. Amen. Right? We're saved by faith alone. But the faith that saves is never alone. Saved by faith alone, but the faith that saves is never alone. Saving faith that is an actual faith brings about an obedience. That's why we can't just do what we want. We can't just live life like there is no God because there is a God. And He's very real. At this time, He judged the world because of where the world was and flooded it. He gave the rainbow as a promise that he wasn't ever going to do that again. He's going to bring up Ephesians 2, 8 through 10. I don't, you don't have to turn there. Um, but I'm going to read it because it just kind of really makes sense. How this, it says, uh, For by grace you have been saved through faith, and this is not your own doing. It is the gift of God, not a result of work, so that no one may boast. It's very clear. We are, we are saved by grace through faith. Faith alone. That's it. But then look at, look at 10. It says, For we are His workmanship, created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God prepared beforehand that we should walk in them. Obedience to God. Well, how do I know what God wants from me? I mean, Noah was very clear, right? Build a boat. Build an ark. I go for work, the pitch. How do we know? The Word of God. The Word of God reveals the will of God. Paul said at the beginning of Romans and at the end of Romans, sandwiched in between is all kinds of doctrine. But he says that this whole, the whole point of that letter was to bring about an obedience of faith. The obedience of faith. 
that faith leads to obeying the word of God. Faith leads to following out after the word of God. Faith leads to the works of God. Our doctrine that we learn lead, should drive us to obedience to his word. What we learn about the facts of God should lead us to obey the things of God. Should obey us to, to love God and to love people. Not perfectly, but that's where it should lead to. Noah's works were driven by his faith. That it was. Imagine this. If God told Noah, okay, hey, I'm going to judge the world. Cool, I believe that. Now go build a boat. But he doesn't do anything. But he doesn't follow out after with the next step that God said. It's the same way that John says that if you say you love God and hate your neighbor, you're a liar. If you say you love God and you hate your brother, you're a liar. If you say you love God and don't do what he says, do you really love God? I'm not trying to put this burden on you. But Noah's works were driven by faith in what God had said. If Noah didn't believe what God said, he wouldn't have built a boat. He wouldn't have built an ark. He would have done this. He was warned of an upcoming destruction, something that was never seen before. And he, all he had was the word of God to go off of. And from that word of God, he acted upon it. He acted upon what God had led him to do. Six to, Genesis 6.22 Noah did all that God commanded him. Noah was convinced that what God said was coming about. He was absolutely convinced. Remember we had been talking about uh, the, the different kinds of faith. The notitia, the census, and the fiduciary, the fiduciary whatever, the Latin words that are really rough. No, no, no Tisha, whatever it is, is the facts. We, we believe the facts. The census was being convinced that the facts were true. I mean, having, having a heart change in those facts. Noah believed the word of God, but he was completely convinced. His heart was convinced that what God was saying was true. He was absolutely convinced that the flood was coming. He was absolutely convinced that God was, was judging the earth. That he was going to condemn the world. So he did what God said. He did exactly what God had said. Could you imagine being Noah in this though? 100 miles from any body of water, he starts building a boat. And it's not like it's not like that little boat over there. You know, like, that, that's way more than that's way less than three hundred cubits. Three hundred cubits is like I think a cubit is eighteen inches. So it's four hundred fifty feet long. So basically, this property is like about four sixty from there. So it's about that big. Um, he was doing some things. You're not going to not notice this. And whenever big things are happening, people are... I, I, this is my picture. There's nothing in the Word about this, but th I got a picture in my mind. I, I, I try to see, you know, get an imagination on what's going on, and Evan Almighty is not the way to do it. Um, but there's a picture. He's building a boat. Hey, hey, Noah, what are you doing? One of the commentators even said they, they would probably call him Nutty Noah or something, you know, something of that nature. What are you doing? Building a boat. Why? It's going to rain. What, what, what's rain? Water's going to fall from the sky. Oh, psh, come on, man. You're nuts, dude. You, you might need to go see a doctor about that. There's something going on in your brain. You could hear the mocking and, 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 and the cutting down and all this stuff. Be like, man, what are you doing? It's going to rain. What, is, what the heck is rain? God is judging the earth. Come on the boat with me. Oh, come on, man. What? I wonder what they were thinking when the water started to fall from the sky. And it started to rain. And like, oh, 
Oh, that's weird. That's crazy. Maybe Noah was right. Yeah, nah, it's just, it'll, it'll, it'll pass. And it started to rise up to the ankles. And yeah, I'm sloshing around, going, man, this is, this is crazy. But then it starts getting up to your knees, and you're like, hey, Noah. Hey, uh, you want, maybe you're right, because you want to let us in. Hey, it's too late. We sealed the boat. We, it, it, it's too late. It's done. It's too late. They didn't believe what Noah said until it was too late. Now, could, could you imagine? Oh man, things are going so good. What are you talking about? Why, God, man, we're progressing. Look at look at look at what we're doing, man. We got money. We got all this stuff going on. We got food. We, dude, things are going good. Why would judge destroy it? God, why would God judge us? We're awesome. You know, I've said this a hundred times, and I'll say it again, and I'll say it again, and I'll say it again. We will always act according to what we believe. Noah believed that God was destroying the earth, so he built a boat. He, he took God at his word and said, man, judgment is coming. I better do something. God promised that he would make a covenant with me. I'm going to follow that. What you believe is going to drive what you do. If you believe that judgment is coming from God, they're going to try to figure out a way out of this. Right? Amen. Many people try to find a way out of this. They just make up all this stuff. And, and, and the heart is still is about the same as Noah. It's like, hey, what do you mean? We're progressing. Look, at, we're doing so good. We wear masks. We got we got all this stuff going on. All these things. When a problem comes up, man, we just vaccinate it and it's all good. I'm not, I'm not trying to hammer vaccinate. I'm you know I'm just trying to bring this into context that, that may be a little bit relatable. Things are good. Now we're in a sexual revolution. Anything goes. Why would God destroy that? Everything is so good. We got people sending us money. The government. You know, got food stamps, we got all kinds of stuff. Why would God destroy us? Things are going good. Why would we go to God? If the Bible says and the judgment is coming, I'm not a hellfire brimstone preacher. I, I, I'm, that's, that's not my nature anymore. Um, but God is going to judge the living and the dead. The Bible is very clear. But a lot of y'all don't even believe that. Don't even care. Don't care about the things of God. Don't care about that that judgment is coming. Don't, don't care that any of this is happening. His faith drove him to action. Your faith will drive you to action. You are going to do what you believe God is leading you to do. I believe that God was leading me to Florida, so we moved to Florida. We didn't just jump up. There was a process, but, you know, your faith will drive you to obey his word. And I, I'm not, I'm not going to sit here and say, uh, you, well, I gave my heart to Christ, got baptized and all that stuff, and everything's good. You know, I, I, I'm fully obedient. No, 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 you're not. I know you're not. I'm not going to judge you on your obedience because it takes a lifetime to work out life. You're, you're going to have falls. You're going to have slips. Sometimes you're going to have major disasters. You're going to have catastrophic failures. But God is faithful. And He knows who are His. He's going to call us back. I'm not going to judge your level of, of obedience because that's not where my place is. I just want to show you about Jesus and show you the things of God. Your faith and your works will work together and you will grow in that. You will grow in your obedience. You will grow in your faith. The more that God leads you along, the more you're going to grow, the more you're going to grow, and the more you're going to grow. You're going to look back and say, man, I don't even know who that dude used to, who I used to be. I look back at some of the things that I did 20 years ago. I'm like, who the heck was that? Because that's not me. I don't, I don't even know who that guy is. I don't even want that guy anywhere near me.
Alexander McLaren said, if faith has any reality in us, it works. If it has no effect, it has no existence. That, that's kind of a crazy thing. If faith is real in your life, there's going to be something. There's going to be something going on. Now, it may not be right away. We, we, we love deliverance ministries. We love deli big, big miraculous things that's not what this walk is man the miracle that that normally happens in our life is that an unbeliever comes to christ that's a miracle that's that's an absolute miracle the rest of it takes time it's like it's like a a, a marriage a wedding awesome just talking about it today weddings are awesome they're great they're big they're victorious they're glorious two people coming to, together as one but then and then there's like this little honeymoon. And then reality sets. Reality sets. And now you're attached to somebody forever. And it's work. Everybody's looking around all married couples. I'm going to read 11 7 again just because uh, I want a reminder. There it is. By faith, Noah, being warned by God, concerning events as yet unseen, in reverent fear, constructed an ark for the saving of his household. By this, he condemned the world and became an heir of the righteousness that comes by faith. He condemned the world just by doing this. Just by preaching. I, 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 I could imagine him saying, hey man, there's plenty of room. Get on the boat. Just, we're, we're, I'm going to seal it up in a couple days. You know, hey, all, you see all these animals coming? Get on back in that giraffe. Let's go. Come on. <laughs> it's still, it's like, why would God judge us? We're awesome. And a lot of us walk through that in our life is, why would God judge me, dude? I'm great. I got my stuff together. I don't drink. I don't smoke. Man, things are all good. I mean, the, the, the sinners over at Set Free, man, they do that stuff. Maybe you need to go over there. Let's get a picture of what life was for you. Let's... Um, Go to Matthew 24. You don't have to turn there. Just uh, write it down. I I'm sure that Bobby has this up here, right? Yep. Amen. I'm going to read 37 to 39. It says, For as the days, as were the days of Noah, so will be the coming of the Son of Man. So so think about this. It's gonna, that judgment's coming again. It's not by water. It's not going to be a flood. But judgment is coming again. For as in the days before the flood, they were eating and drinking, marrying and giving in marriage until the day when Noah entered the ark. And then, and they were unaware until the flood came and swept them away, swept them all away. So will be the coming of the Son of Man. That's crazy. That the, the, that the judgment and the warning that, that Noah had to have been given him was like, hey, God's judging. Come on, get on the boat. And that, that's that's where we stand in this life. As Christians, is hey, God's going to judge. I mean, I see street preachers. God bless them. Um, I think they take it too far sometimes, standing outside of every concert, every this, saying everybody's going to hell. They, they stand outside of Christian, Christian concerts, screaming God's judgment. I'm like, dude, what are you... I mean, I understand coming out of, like, Pantera show or whatever. Yeah, yeah, yeah you're going to... Yeah, because they probably are all going to hell, but whatever. <laughs> um, but, I mean, <laughs> coming out of uh, Winter Jam a couple years ago, guys came back and they were like, dude, there's these guys out there screaming that everybody's going to hell. <laughs> like, uh, you know. They were in complete disregard of God. They were unaware of the things. They, 
They were just living life the way that they wanted to live. They were just doing the things they want. They had no regard for pleasing God. They had no regard for the Word of God. No regard for anything going on. Jesus says it's happening again. With the coming of the Son of Man. Because Matthew 24 is talking about the second coming of Christ. It's going to be the same. It's not going to be flood. It's not going to flood. God promised not to flood the earth again. That's what the rainbows in the sky are all about. It's God's promise to all mankind. That, that's a covenant that's, that's to all people. Not just exclusive to God, but it's a covenant with the earth that he's not going to flood it again. But I think it's going to be worse. Because water is one thing. The fire of God is another thing. It's the same thing right now. Things are bad. We look around this world, things are bad. You know, I don't know if you guys, I know phase one guys might not know unless you guys are listening to Christian radio, which, you know, that probably doesn't happen. There's a pastor in jail in Canada for not closing the church, for still holding church service. He's in jail. They won't let him go. Because he refuses to stop preaching the word of God. He refuses to close his church. He refuses to do that. So they put him in jail. And now his church is inside the jail. Amen. Sexual morality, that's the norm. That's just what life is. We have no regard for marriage or, or the way that God has laid anything out. It's, and anything goes free for all. It talks about that in Revelation, that they, they won't repent of their, 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 basically their murders, their idolatries, their drug use, and their sexual morality, and then they worship demons. I'm like, hey man, that's kind of where we're at. I think it's getting worse. See, in that day, they didn't care either. But Noah was a righteous man. Why? Because he took God at his word. And he didn't just, oh yeah, God, cool, you're going to flood the earth. Come on. Throw me a life vest. No, God said build a boat. No more. What he believed drove him to obedience. He believed God was judging the earth. He believed that he needed to build a boat, so he built the boat. God working in his life caused him to be obedient to the word. God working in your life will cause you to be obedient to the word as well. It, 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 there's a parallel in this. You can look back and see God at work in all sorts of different ways when you look back in your life. You may not, so a lot of times, man, you, you come through the, the, the phase one and all that stuff and you're like, oh yeah, that's cool. And, you know, I don't really see any growth. I don't really see, man, God's, gone god's not present i really don't see where he's at you know is he even there anymore and everybody around you's like well dude man you've grown so much you know there's a lot of things you know i get i get an opportunity to watch a lot of people grow i get a lot of opportunity to watch people take two steps forward and eight steps back and then 10 steps forward and then four steps back and it's kind of like the the walk though but when you step back and you look back a long time you're going to see some change you're going to see some things that God has done I don't know what I was thinking when I wrote that I do that a lot. Don't know what I was talking about. But you're going to see what it's like to be a part of the plan of God. You're going to see where, where he saved you, where he justified you. And after that justification, that process of sanctification comes alive. And, and, and you really start to see, look back and see the work of God. And the only way you can really see the work of God is that, the fact that God has drawn you to himself. We can see the work that we do in the name of God. And what is that work? 
John 6, 29. You want to know what you have to do? It says, believe in the one. Believe in ah. You have that up there? This is the work of God. That you believe in Him whom He has sent. That's your job. That's what you got to do. Well, Pastor, what about, where's, what's my boat? I don't know. I don't believe Jesus, though. Well, what do I do on top of that? You love the people that God has placed before you. If you leave, live in room one, you, you, you love the people that are in room one. If you live at set free, you love the people at set free. If God blesses you with the family, you love the family that you got. If God blesses you with the job, you love the boss that God gave you. Oh, that dude's wicked. Doesn't matter. It says love the wicked. Love the good ones. Love the bad ones. Because God is working things out, not you. Your, your testimony is following Christ. You, most of the time, you don't even have to say nothing. Man, hey, dude, there's something different about you. What's, what, what's up? Well, Peter says, hey, man, I got hope in Jesus. I don't know what y'all are doing. Yeah. Are you guys doing, you know, in and out of jail, bailing you out? No, no, y'all have that. I got faith in Jesus. I'm, I'm just going to live life, you know. Y'all do your thing. I'm going to come to work. But that faith leads us to follow, whatever that may be. And I don't know what it looks like in your life. I know in my life, I, I left Wyoming and came to Florida to open a church that I get to see all kinds of people. I get to see a lot of people, a lot of knuckleheads, a lot of douchebags. But I get to see a lot of douchebags get hope. Amen? <laughs> No, I had to have had some mocking laughs. No, I had to have had some people judging him, saying, man, you're too harsh. God wouldn't do that. da 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 There'd probably be a lot of hatred for this guy shitting the word of God until it started to rain. A lot of people thought I was nuts going to Florida. I remember telling my boss, she's like, where are you going to stay? I was like, I don't know. It's like, well, what are you going to do? I don't know. Well, why are you going? I don't know. It's got... God's tugging my heart to Florida. Now I can look back and I can say, man, dude, it's awesome what you've done. Not because of me, but what God has done. There is a judgment coming. There is judgment coming. God promises to judge the living and the dead. He promises to judge the world. But once he does, it's too late. So this is this is the commission. This is you want application? Here's some application. This has all been application. But Second Corinthians five nineteen and twenty says, "In Christ, God was reconciling the world to Himself, not counting trespasses against them, and entrusting to us the ministry of reconciliation." That's what God. That's what God was doing in Christ, reconciling the world to Himself. It says, therefore, we are ambassadors for Christ. God making his appeal through us. We implore you on the behalf of Christ, be reconciled to God. And how we do that? It says that if you confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. It's simple. We share the hope that we have in Christ. We share the love that Jesus has for his people. We tell people about the forgiveness of sin and the reality of eternity. And that if they believe in Christ, they'll be safe from that judgment to come. Let's pray. Father, uh, thank you, Lord, for your word, Lord. Thank you for the example that we have in Noah, Lord. Thank you that, that you know, faith without works isn't dead, Lord. It's not about everything that we do. It's about trusting in you and doing the things that you lead us to do as they come. Lord, like Calvin said, we are saved by faith alone, but saving faith doesn't come alone. Lord, I pray that you help us to listen to your word, Lord, and help us to love you and to love the people that you place before us, Lord. That you help us to serve those that, that, that you laid out before us, Lord, that, you've, that we come across, Lord, even the wicked and the evil, Lord. 
I pray that you help show us how to love, Lord. That you love through us. Lord, as we, we preach, Lord, be reconciled to you. Lord, we love you and we thank you. In Jesus' name, amen. So now we're going to...